Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 330. Today we're going to talk about Kanban, the automotive revolution. Uh, this is a new game from Stronghold Games. Uh, plays two to four players in about two hours, give or take. Of course, that time's definitely going to come down as you learn the game. Uh, it's designed by Vital Lacerda, who also did Vinos and CO2. And it is a complex, heavy, lots of interlocking mechanism Euro. So the theme of Kanban is, as it says, automotive production. And the game's actually modeled on the production technique of Kanban, which is considered a just-in-time production. You're gonna spend a lot of time dealing with the middle management of Sandra, and she's gonna be guiding you and or hounding you throughout the game. You can play with two different modes, or in this case, moods. You can play with nice Sandra or mean Sandra. And Sandra also has an avatar in the game. She is this pink meeple. You can see her at her starting area at her desk, and she's gonna be moving around on the different spaces on the board and evaluating the departments associated with those spaces. So to give you a better thematic sense of the game, which I think is important into getting into the game, uh, this just-in-time development is pretty common across things outside of the automotive. I actually do it uh, quite a bit in my line of work uh, in software and actually develop software for different pieces of hardware. And similar to this, you kind of have to have all these projects running at once. So just because you know the hardware side is working on stuff doesn't mean the software side is going to sit around and twiddle their thumbs waiting for a piece of hardware to come in. So you have these sort of lines of development and things happening. You know, designers are designing in this case, designing new engines and brake systems and things, and the factory is always producing new and new cars. So trying to line up all of these different sort of disparate and sometimes opposing uh, branches of the company can be tricky. And so that's a lot of really what this game is about is you're kind of jumping from department to department, sort of seeing to this department, and then on your next turn you're seeing to this department and managing that. And Sandra's kind of jumping around sort of, she's that middle manager that nobody likes really, even, even the nice Sandra. And so she's kind of checking off the boxes so to report to the upper management. And she's awarding bonuses if she's in a good mood and she's basically penalizing you if she's in a mean mood. I'll say right off the bat, I don't like playing the mean one, at least yet. I still want to play it a couple more times, honestly, to make up my mind. But I like the nice one because I feel like I'm being punished because the other players are doing well, or in the case of when I do well, they're being punished enough by me scoring more points than them. It's not usually too drastic anyway. So uh, I kind of prefer the, the nice one, but that may change over time. So if you take a look at the board, it is very overwhelming. There's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of different areas to look at on the board. If you're familiar with Vinos, this kind of setup will uh, make a little bit of sense to you where you, everything's kind of compartmentalized and digesting what all the different functionalities of the areas on the board is going to represent. Each player has a player board and this is where you're going to be able to store parts and designs and you can also see here everybody gets one worker that you're going to be moving across the board. Now here you can see two tracks. You've got the certification track with the tiny meeples and then everybody has a disc on the banked shift track. You're going to be dealing with these tracks quite a bit, but first let's take a look at the certification track. The very first thing that players are going to do is move their meeples up one spot on the certification track. Now as you move them up, this is going to determine turn order for the first round. So in this case, the purple player, he might move his meeple up and he's betting he'll go second. But in exchange, he's going to get a parts voucher, and this can act as any parts. It's like a wild. And then the blue player might not really care about turn order in the first round, and so they're going to go to this last spot, and this is going to allow them to bank a shift. I'll talk a little bit more about what bank shifts are in a minute. And then yellow may not care about the bonus that's left, so they're just going to go to the first spot. And then orange may go to the third slot and get a book tile, and this is basically representing homework that you will take home with you and will help you in your training. So once turn order is determined, each player will be able to take a part from the logistics department and the parts are just different colored cubes. And they'll also take a design from the design department and they'll put these on their player board and you'll also see that they start with one parts voucher on their player board. And from there, they'll start placing the workers on the board and taking actions. So for example, we have here in the design area, two spots where you can put your workers. You can see on the left, this spot will give you two shifts or two actions that you can execute on your turn. And then the spot on the right will go after the first spot, but they're gonna get three actions or three shifts that they can execute. So after all the players have placed their worker, 
Then we're going to walk down the row and then execute those from left to right across the board. And whenever you reach Sandra, she's actually going to execute an action, which I'll talk about in a minute. But for the first round, she's going to stay put at her desk. And then on future actions, she's going to start moving. So as players take their actions left to right, you're going to lay the worker down. And then once everybody's taken their actions, again, moving from left to right. From now on, you ignore the certification track and look just at the worker track. You're going to go left to right, and then you have to move your worker from whatever station they're currently at to a different station. Now, when it comes to Sandra's turn to move, she's actually going to move left to right into the next available station once there's an open spot. And then when you go back through and resolve, once you get to her, she's going to basically evaluate that department. And depending on which department she's in, uh, if you're playing the nice Sandra mode, basically it'll say, hey, do you have two parts or do you have two designs on your board or have you tested two designs? If you are the highest trained in that particular department and you have at least two of whatever department she's in, then you're gonna get some bonus points based on the number of bank shifts you have. Remember I showed you the bank shifts board. Now the mean Sandra is just the opposite. With that Sandra, you actually start with some points you start with some uh, some bank shifts, but when she gets to a department and evaluates that, she's gonna look at the people that are at the lowest on the training track for that department. And if they don't have at least two, then they're actually gonna lose some points based on their bank shifts. So you're probably wondering, you know, well, how do I win the game? What's the point of this? I'm jumping from department to department. Well, let's talk about, real quickly about a high level. What you wanna do is you wanna get some designs. You wanna get some designs for the different style of cars that are actually gonna be produced. And here you can see the production area. And then eventually what you're gonna do is you wanna get some designs tested and run through the test track in this testing and innovation department. So that's kind of the basic thematic gist. But the other thing to keep in mind is you're also gonna have at least two and maybe three board meetings that happen in the game. Over here you can see some bonus cards that have been dealt out. Players will actually get a hand of these as well. And what some of the things you're gonna be doing is unlocking seats at the meetings. And the more seats that you've unlocked, the more kind of say you can have at the meeting or basically the more bonus point combinations you have available to you when a meeting does occur. So let's kind of quickly run through these different departments. So first we can see here the design department. This is key, you, you need designs. So if you go here, you can see that we have two spots that we can go to. We can go to the two shift spot, which will go first, or you can go to the three shift spot. And again, that's the number of actions that you can get. And so what are some actions here that you can do? Well, the first thing you wanna do is just take the design. You can see the set of four designs on the right-hand side here. If you take one of these four, you can either grab an extra book or you can bank an extra shift. And the thing to notice about the designs is the color of the vehicle, and this is a style of car. So here we've got a yellow SUV style car. All the yellow designs represent SUVs. And here you've got a black car, and this is sort of your futuristic, you know, fancy prototype car. And each part has a color. This is the color of part that you're gonna to need to upgrade the design. So usually what you're gonna do here is go here and grab some designs. Now in our example, we had spent three shifts we haven't quite yet used all four shifts of our day. And what you can do is you can use bank shifts that you've acquired on a previous turn and then use up to four total shifts because again, there's only eight hours in the day and whatnot. Now, the other thing that you can do at a particular department is actually execute the training. And you can spend shifts to do this. For each shift that you spend, you'll increase your player disc up the track and again every department has such a track now what the books do is they actually allow you to jump up these certification tracks without spending any shifts so any books that you have gotten on a previous turn then you can actually spend as many as you want uh, on the department that you're currently in and then you can move up that track as you go up the track you're actually going to get to a level where you are certified once you move from the second to the third track then you are going to unlock a certification for that particular department. As you move to the top of the track, you're gonna get some rewards. Now the first player to hit the top of a particular track is going to take a chair, and that will unlock a chair at the boardroom meeting. And then you'll also get a reward. So in this case, you'll take one of the reward tiles, and this is a reward of two points. So as I said, each of the different departments on the board has this certification track, and this is very important the certification idea. So let's talk a little bit about what happens when you trip over that level and you get certified in a department. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna move one level up on the certification track. And from here, you can choose any of the four spots 
in that level. It could be some points or bank shifts and whatnot, but you're gonna take that reward. You're also going to unlock something either on your player board or on the board itself. In this case, since we were in the design department, we'll unlock an extra slot so we can have an extra design on our board. The other thing that'll happen when you get certification is it will sort of unlock a little special ability related to that section on the board. As you can see here, the unlocking of the design certification allows you to grab the top two designs from these two stacks here, as opposed to just those that are on display in the two rows on the board. So it gives you some more options. The other thing to note is that the highest players on each of the tracks at the end of the game are gonna get five, three, and one points, respectively, depending on how high they are at the track. So this is a very interesting aspect of the game because when you go to these departments, you can go, you can get, do the thing, like you can go get parts, you can go get designs or whatever. But you also wanna spend some of those shifts that you get based on the spot that you take to go up in training. And uh, you know, there's a few things. You get the points at the end of the game. You get to do the different unlocks every time you get certified. As Sandra moves around, remember she's going to evaluate those different departments. And in the case of a uh, nice Sandra, if you're high up on there, you maybe get some extra bonus points when she goes and evaluates that department. If in the case of mean Sandra, you might lose some points you've neglected to train there. So this is a very interesting thing strategically because. From what I've seen, there's a few kinds of different strategies. You know, you kind of want to do a mixture of stuff as well, but if you kind of spend a lot of your time sort of in training, kind of taking sort of the management path in a lot of ways without actually doing a whole ton of getting designs and doing production, that's one track to victory. Now that's nice because that helps you, uh, you know, you get up higher, Sandra's more favorable to you, you get a chance at some chairs that you can unlock, and so you've got that track to kind of go to, whereas if you spend more time doing some of the more other tasks, you know, getting designs and actual producing, that's a different sort of path to victory. Uh, but on the other hand, it's just like moving up a track. So that's something I think people are gonna be like, well, this is kind of weird, but it kind of fits in. So if you kind of follow me through the rest of the review here, I'll talk a little bit more about the meeting and why those chairs are so vastly important to unlock and some other things. But it's, it's a very kind of interesting dynamic between do I spend shifts just training, which is kind of just, I move up a track, big whoop not very exciting or do I want to grab designs and parts and test cars and things so it's very interesting next we'll take a quick look at the parts department and from here you can see you get a couple of different actions the first thing you might do is play one of your two parts cards everybody has two parts cards they start with in their hand you can play one of these and you can kind of align these uh, based on the center line going down and this will actually seed the board with parts matching the color based on which side of the line you put the card on. And then another action can be to take one set of a color of a part and go ahead and put those on your player board. Next, we'll take a look at the testing and innovation department. This is where you're actually gonna execute your designs that you've acquired and use some of the parts that you've acquired previously. So if you go here for a shift action, you can, let's say, upgrade a design. So we've got a design here for a green car and this is gonna upgrade the brakes for this particular style of car. So we're gonna take an action, we're going to place a white cube matching the white brakes, and then we're gonna mark the green car design here, and we can choose any of the bonuses available. So in this case, we'll just get four points. We'll flip this tile over, and it'll score us two points. And there's also a parts track for this. So anytime anybody upgrades a design for a particular part, that part is gonna move up this track one space. The other thing you can do here is actually take cars. Now, as cars are produced and come out, which we haven't talked about yet, they're gonna come behind this pace car. And you can take cars from here for a shift action based on how far behind the pace car it is. So if you take the car immediately behind the pace car, that's gonna cost you one shift. The second and third cars behind cost two, and finally the fourth costs three, and you can never have more than four. Now when you take the cars, you're gonna put them into your garage, and you can see you get some different bonuses based on the spot you put them. Here you get actually uh, two books. Based on the number of cars that you took, you'll advance the pace car that many spaces. So if we had taken two cars, then the pace car would advance two spaces. Every time that the pace car hits one of the checkered flags, we're going to advance the meeting count, and then we're gonna put the big white chunky block at the end of the worker placement track to signify that we're going to have a board meeting at the end of this round. 
Next, we can take a look at the production area, and this is actually where you're going to start producing cars. So as you produce cars, you're gonna add a new one to each of the different lines. That's gonna actually push them down the assembly line, but you can do some interesting kind of blocking here as you sort of build cars and push them down different routes. You can sort of set yourself up to have certain colored cars that you want to have produced pushed out onto the test track. And as you produce cars, you're also gonna score points. And you can also see there are some demand tiles for producing certain types of cars. So in this case, uh, there's a red demand tile. And the first player to produce a red car will get a chair. Again, that unlocks chairs at the boardroom. And then once you run out of chairs on a particular bonus tile, you'll replace it with a different color car. Now the way that you actually produce the cars is by adding parts cubes to the particular line. But now we've got a different requirement. So remember when we added the design for the white brakes to the green car. This means that the green car now requires to have at least a white cube in its slots before you add any other color cubes. So first we've got to add a white cube. Now every time you add a cube, it's actually going to produce a car. You're going to shift all the cars down one slot. And then any cubes after that, in this case, can be anything. They just have to be different colored cubes because of course, you don't need two sets of brakes. So we could add a black chassis cube and then a pink engine cube here as well. Again, as those cars come out, they're going to get behind the pace car on the test track. And this is where you can you know, start acquiring them for your garage. Finally, the last spot that you can go to is actually go to the meeting area and train in that area. That's the only real action you can do here is move up the training track. Now every time Sandra moves back to her administrative desk, you're going to advance the week marker. As soon as you have either two weeks and three meetings or two meetings and three weeks, that's going to be the last round of the game. Now at the end of the week, it's very simple. You're gonna take a look at the cars in your garage and you're gonna look at the upgrades that you have that match those particular types of cars. And you're gonna get two points for each upgrade that you have and then one point for each upgrade everybody else has for those cars. Now the meetings is a whole other story. The meetings are a very different kind of animal. So what's going to happen here is you can see there's four face-up performance goal cards. And players will also have a hand of three performance goal cards. Now what you're going to do at the meetings is very interesting in a lot of ways. So remember, you've been unlocking these chairs and things. And every time you get one of those big red chairs, you flip over a chair at the meeting that you can have. So if you go into the meeting, let's say you have three chairs available to you. Well, those are three bonuses that you can possibly attain. So you've got the four bonuses there in the middle and in turn order based on the certification track now. Remember, you've been going up that certification track every time you get a certification. So not only does that give you nice little bonuses as you move up, but you've got to sort of decide, okay, do I want to try to make sure I'm first in the meeting? Maybe there's a really nice goal that sort of fits, you know, the stuff I've been doing in the game. So you've got that to think about. But again, everybody has three cards in their hand. So at some point during that meeting, you have to actually take a card from your hand, play it face up, that's now available for everybody else to score. So that's very tricky because you might have a good one in your hand. You're like, wow, I can really score this. But you know, Billy over there, he may just take and put his chair on my card just to screw me out of like a lot of points. Cause maybe he'll get like six points and I'd get nine or something. So as you take turns in the meeting, you're either putting a chair on a card or playing one card. So you, everybody has to play just one card available out of their personal hand. So everybody's taken actions and scored bonus points, you're still going to have two cards left in your hand. So everybody's going to take one of those and put that face down and then everybody reveals and that kind of seeds the meeting for the next meeting. And if you're playing less than four players then you deal some off the deck, then everybody draws back up to two. So you still got the one card left over and then now you've got another set of two cards to score. And there's also uh, some bonus tiles as well that you can score bonus points at the end of the game. There's a, actually a pretty good stack of those, so those can be very different. So I'm gonna get into the review part here. So let's work from the meetings. The meetings are awesome because it's almost like almost a parody in some ways. So you can very see the sort of political, you know, machinations of middle management. And, you know, even though you haven't really been doing that much work, you've just been actually kind of going up these different meeting tracks and unlocking all these chairs. And then you're kind of taking credit for everybody's work. So that's awesome. It's really funny, actually. Uh, but it works very thematically and it's very cool strategically with how that works because you have your sort of personal goals that you can see, but they're not just like strict hidden goals. Because a lot of times in games you go, here's the public goals, here's the hidden 
achieving goals, surprise, you know, here's my 50 points. But this is very interesting because you have to make one or two of those actually public in some sense so that people can kind of ninja and take those. So getting back to what I was talking about earlier with the whole balance between center, going up these different certifications and management tracks versus actually like doing stuff, you know, getting designs, you know, using the parts to upgrade the designs and then you know, actually producing the cars and all that kind of good stuff. So you can get a lot of points that way, but you can also get a lot of points, uh, you know, kind of playing the management game as well. And so you can also, you know, try to strike a nice balance between that. But it's a very interesting thing because for me, it's like, oh, this is my work. <laughs> like, I, you know, I, was, I remember the first time I played, I'm like, this is my work. I am playing my work. Why is this fun? You know, how can this be fun? I do this at work. Well, first of all, it's fun because it's a car company. I don't work at a car company and it's cool. You know, you have the different kind of cars, the green cars, the SUVs and the, you know, the prototype cars and the sports car and all that stuff. And you've got the hilarious meeting thing with the whole middle management thing. I love that part of it. And it's just interesting, you know, mechanically and all that kind of good stuff. Now, just talking about the designer for a second, this is definitely more like Vinos than it is CO2. Um, in ways, but see, they're all very different, you know? And it's funny because, hmm, like Venos has like bigger combos that you can do. Cause if you've played Venos, and I'm sorry I'm reviewing this along with that, but I'm kind of want to put his kind of games in context because uh, he is his own kind of thing, I think. Um, he's a very fresh designer in a lot of ways. So Venos has those, the barrel concept, right? Where you can get these huge combos and bonuses and, and it's really about getting those barrels and those bonus tracks and really manipulating that. This doesn't really have that necessarily. It has a similar thing with Venus because Venus, like every so often, you would go to the wine fair and you know submit a wine and you'd get kind of extra points for that. So you could kind of do like that fair strategy and as opposed to shipping and exporting wine and getting a lot of points that way. So there was a balance there. So this kind of reminds me of that there's sort of that balance between like management and actual work. <laughs> so you have that balance there, sort of presenting your all this. Hey, look at all this cool stuff I did at the meeting, or in the case of Venus at the wine fair, uh, versus you know going through and sort of doing a little bit more grunt work, or a little bit more you know actual production and shipping and things like that. So this has that similar flavor to that uh, versus CO2. Um, but you know co2 is kind of like it's it's definitely its own beast compared to these two um so i think it's interesting because i'm thinking okay well i you know my shelf only has so much room and i'm kind of like well kanban and vino co2 is kind of off on its own that's definitely a different special uh, kind of game there but kanban and, and vino are very similar so i'm trying to figure out well, which one do i like better you know, I've played Venus a couple more times than this. I've played this uh, three times, I should say. A two, three, and four player, actually. I like the theme of this better, because I have Viticulture, for example. That's a wine game. And really good game, you know, fairly most of the gamers I played with like it. The family really likes that one, though. Uh, it's good medium weight Euro kind of thing. So that's kind of like my wine game. I was kind of in the back of my head. I was like, I'll get rid of Venus, because uh, this is a really cool theme. I like this. It's like car production, assembly line, you know, taking something that seems so like just, you know, workmanlike and kind of boring, but it really makes a nice, fun, strategic experience out of it. And a lot of good decisions and strategies and things. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It's like, this has this whole track thing with, with kind of like the homework and then you have the books and you do homework. It's like, what, this game has homework? <laughs> like, you know, twice I play a game uh, with two groups there and in two out of the three games I played, you know, people were like, oh wow, the game has homework, really? <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Uh, so I think that's the one detractor people might sort of latch onto and say, oh, that's dumb. You know, it's got homework in it. I think it actually does fit thematically and I'm okay with it. And, you know, you kind of be the, the bookworm and store up a bunch of books and go up a bunch of tracks. But it doesn't have that big combo thing of Vino. So and it could be I'm just kind of missing a couple things. I mean, not really, because you're kind of setting up yourself for... Uh, the meetings, the meetings are probably more important than the fairs and are in Venus. I don't know. You know, it's hard to make strategic points in a review when you're like, oh, I've played it three times. <laughs> I haven't figured the game out. I figured it out enough to tell you about it, but not like, like solve the game or anything. Um, so I think I'll probably keep both for now and just, you know, maybe in a year I'll figure out which one I want to get rid of, but maybe neither. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so back to player count, that'll be the last point. Uh, two, three, and four. Best with four, easily. 
Um, but two and three are still good, and I don't know which one I really like better because I kind of like the two player. It's a little bit more open ended. You make a couple of changes to the amount of bonuses and things, and the test track is a little smaller, so the pace car kind of goes quicker. Um, I like it with four because it's it feels like it kind of it, it it slows the game down a little bit, which you might think would be bad, but I kind of like that extra bit of time. I don't know. It kind of feels like I had more time to do things in the four player game versus uh, in the two or three where it's like, oh my gosh, it feels like it's gonna be ending. And I'm like, I don't have any designs, any parts, any designs, and I need to make the car. So it seems like it kind of happens quickly. So it's almost like you wanna play two player when you're kind of an expert at the game. Um, Michaelis is kind of like that, where as a two player game, it's like, whoa, yeah, I got so many things I can do here. It's like back and forth. And it's not that great, honestly, with two, but um, I think you want you want players that kind of have played the game and kind of know a little bit of the pacing and the rhythms of the game uh, when you play it with two and three. So four player I prefer, but still plays really good at all the player accounts. I wouldn't, like if you said, I was only, only gonna play this two player, should I get it? I'd probably say, yeah. So I think that's it. Um, components good, pieces good, art's good. Definitely mind job <laughs> of a game. But once you get in, it's very simple. You move your worker, boom, take parts, take designs, run the designs, run the tests, see what kind of cars people are specializing in, try to block them uh, with the, the car production so you get all your red cars in front of their yellow cars so they have to push all yours out. Um, and so there's some things you can do as you push cars out, actually we'll remove cars from behind the pace car because you only have, ever have four there. So there's some stuff you can do there. And then you got the whole meeting thing too. But it's really, to me, it's really about a focus and uh, trying to balance the focus of meeting versus actual work. Let's call it that. So anyway. Ramble, ramble. <laughs> uh, hard to review this game uh, for sure. I don't know, is it easier to review this than written? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's probably hard written and video. So anyway, that's Kanban. Definitely get it if you like big, crunchy, meaty Euros and really cool theme, assembly lines, cars. Who thought that would be fun? I didn't. So there you go, thanks.